Welcome back, my dear light bulbs, to another video. If you're a new viewer to my channel, remember to subscribe to become part of the light bulb army. So, yes, we have the Yu Yu Hakusho live action series. And let's get right into it. There will be spoilers in this video, so I will tell you when the spoilers start. So, don't leave the video yet. So, right off the bat, Yu Yu Hakusho live action. Going into this one, when I first saw the trailer, even when I heard about the announcement before there was a trailer or anything like that, I was like, okay, I'm going to keep... You know, not my hopes up, but I'm, I, I just wanted the series to be decent, right? So, it's five episodes, which when I clicked on Netflix, I'm like, five episodes? That's it? Not even an eight-episode series was going on? Like, I was kind of disappointed because I wanted more. And when I started watching Yu Yu Hakusho, I was like, yeah, this is really good. I, I, I did enjoy it. It's not like the most amazing live action I have ever watched. But I'm just glad that anime live actions are actually starting to become decent enough where I'm just like, okay, it's, it's good. Because, no, we are not going to get all the content from the anime in the live action because, one, they have to fit in these five episodes this first season. Two, the live action has to be popular enough for them to get a season two. Hopefully this does get a season two because I do want to get, uh, I do want to see a season two. And, yeah, but I, I was just surprised with the five episodes. So, five episodes and a lot of content was crammed into five episodes. However, the pacing, the way they did it, it didn't feel like it was sped up too much. It didn't feel like too much stuff was... I said cram. By cram, I mean, like, they took stuff from the anime and made it work within the five episodes. Because the five episodes, each episode is around 48 minutes to, like, 54 minutes. So, that is good enough uh one of the disappointing things is that we did not get the theme song og theme song i wish they brought it back i guess that's copyright or whatever you know they got to pay a lot of money for that so we didn't get that i believe the voice of yusuke let me actually look it up right now i don't think the voice of yusuke was actually um was actually the voice actor in this live action so Justin Cook did the English voice because I actually watched this in English. Okay, actors. Okay, let me see who's in the live action adaptation as I continue this video. But the voices were good. I watched it in the English version of it because I watched the original Yu Yu Hakusho show in English and I was like, you know, the English dub of Yu Yu Hakusho, the anime, was great. And the English dub for this one is good as well. But yeah, I like the voice acting for the anime. So now I will get into spoiler territory. So in the very beginning, we have Yusuke. He saves the kid from getting hit by a truck, right? So that's the very beginning of everything. And that did happen in the anime as well. So I was glad. Obviously, they got to have that scene because... The truck hits Yusuke, the kid gets saved, the little kid, and Yusuke dies, and basically he's seeing his lifeless body getting carried out on his stretcher, and he's wondering what's happening, why can't, why can't nobody hear him, and then he finally realizes, oh wait, I'm dead. So right off the bat, yes, Yusuke is the delinquent, but we have seen scenes where he helped this little kid, he helped the kid from his school stop, well, not stop getting buddy, bullied, but he got his money back. But all the teachers, all they see him as a delinquent, the other students see him as delinquent, as a delinquent, but they don't see the good heart that Yusuke has because a lot of the time Yusuke has helped people, even though he acts like this, right? And I have to say that Yusuke's character type for Shonen is one of my favorites, you know, the loud mouth, like snarky comments and stuff like that. I like characters like this. Some people don't. Because they're like, okay, that's not a good role model. But I just like, I think they're they're a badass. Like Yusuke is a badass, badass in the anime and in this live action series. So I like that right off the bat, we actually get Yusuke's character. We see Yusuke's character, what type of person he is. He's not just a delinquent, an evil guy or anything like that. He actually cares for people. He actually saves people as well. So... Him becoming a spirit detective was definitely a good thing, which in the, sh in the live action, okay, I do not believe they called it spirit detective, 
the uh, Koenma was just like, okay, we're, we'll give you your life back, but you just gotta work for me, basically. The other thing is, he did say Spirit Gun in the very last episode, and Koenma even said, I'm teaching you the Spirit Gun technique, but I wish every time he used Spirit Gun, he actually yelled Spirit Gun, like, he liked the anime, like, that would be, that would have been way better, but maybe in the next season. I was also a little bit disappointed that he ate what he used. I think it's called. Let's see, he ate dragon, dragon, dragon of the darkness flame. Right? He did not yell that. I'm like, what the heck? They couldn't make him yell dragon of the darkness flame like really loud. Like that is one of the most badass techniques, and he did not yell it. You know, when it comes to shonen anime even live actions like it, it, yelling out your techniques is like has been a staple for so long and that's not a thing that started in dragon ball or anything it, way before that like but you know it didn't happen but the, it was still cool to see he used that technique I, I just wish they actually yelled their techniques a little bit more often because at the end yes yusuke spirit gun like that was cool and stuff so the casting I do enjoy it. I, I enjoy the casting for all the actors, actually. Kuobara. Kuobara. So cool, man. Like, Kuobara is... Okay, Kuobara is so goofy and stuff in the anime. I like his character a lot. By the way, Yusuke is my favorite character in both the anime and live action. Uh, but Kuobara is definitely number two. He's just hilarious. Kuobara is just too funny. In the live action, you know... He he's still a little bit goofy as well. He still has scraps with Yusuke. He has like little battles and stuff, and, and he's always taking losses. But I like his character. Like it, that was a great actor for for that role. Like he, he definitely embodied how I see Kuobara. If Kuobara was made into live action, so that that was definitely a good thing. I also like how I got my notes here. How everyone reacted to Yusuke's death. Keiko Kobar Atsuko. So Atsuko is Yusuke's mother. How she was very sad about Yusuke dying and stuff. Obviously because she loves her son very much. We had Kobar. He was really mad. He's like, Urameshi, you can't die. Like, like I, I still haven't beat you yet, right? He, you know, he's not expressing himself crying and stuff. But he's very frustrated. Because at the end of the day, later on, Kobar even says, you know, I don't... You probably don't even see me as a rival right now, but you're my rival, basically. So, because all the scraps and stuff, they had all the battles they had. And Kuobar lost them all, but, you know, that does build a bond between people, right? And Yusuke, at the time, you know, he probably didn't really see Kuobar as a friend early on during those battles and stuff. But definitely after season one, he definitely sees Kuobar as a friend. So that was a really good thing. And Keiko, who is Yusuke's childhood friend... Which should be his girlfriend if he ever asked her out. Uh, definitely cried a lot of tears for her. And he ends up coming back, telling Kalaima, you know, I'll do it. I'll do whatever you tell me to. And he basically becomes a spirit detective. And then spirit detective, uh, Kalaima basically sends him on missions to stop Yokai from causing mayhem in on Earth, right? So, originally, there's the Earth, uh, Earth realm. There's a demon realm. And it used to be one, and what happened was, we got revealed that Koenna was the one that split it in half because, obviously, humans were just getting killed left and right. Like, humans versus demons, aka yokai, humans are no match, so that's why it was split, and that was a great decision. And later on, we got a character that, oh man, this guy, this guy, this, this guy, literally, his whole ambition on why he wanted to do things is because he was bored. He's like, oh, the world is so boring, you know. I, I want to reconnect the human world and the, and, and the demon realm. And this is his reason for it. Let me see if I have the... If I have the actual quote he said. Okay, I'll talk about it later when I find the quote. Because I don't want to make this video... Actually, it doesn't even matter if this video is too long. Because it's going to be a, a long review nevertheless. So, yeah, I, I, I like that. Now, to tell you the truth, the anime impact of Yusuke's death in episode 1 definitely hit way harder for me than the live action. I don't know why. 
I, I don't know. I, I just feel like the voice acting in the anime was just so spectacular. Like, the the emotion, it, it just hit me different. I was like, oh, man. Because I remember when I, I, there was a year. I believe it was 2018, around there. And I was like, you know what? Let me finally give you Hakusho a watch. And I, I watched that first episode. I almost cried. I was like, whoa, wait. What kind of strong introduction is this? Like, this was really good. So, for me personally, the anime hit harder with episode one. Now, but this is about the live action. So, if you watch both, then you, 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 you know what I'm talking about. So, there was this episode where Yusuke uses half his life to save Kurama's mother. Yes, you heard me right. He just met Kurama. Kurama. Who is a yokai, right? Well, he's not really, he is a yokai, but he's also human because he did something. He got gravely injured as, so yeah, basically Kurama gets injured 17 years ago as Neo Kurama, right? And basically, yeah, I'm like. And, and basically finds a way to get reborn as... He's still a yokai, by the way. But he's still human and actually has a mother, right? So he uses this mirror to basically get his wish granted. But he was going to sacrifice his life for his mother's life. And Yusuke, like I was saying before, is such a good guy. Which, this is crazy, by the way. He goes in the mirror and says, take half my life. So Kurama doesn't die. But Yusuke loses half of his life right kurama loses half of his life right and we don't really know how long yokai live which i'm assuming is a very long time because example toguro and stuff he still has his youth and stuff but yusuke is a regular human and he lost half of his life to save the mother of a yokai that he didn't even really know because he's such a good guy even kobara was like yusuke what are you doing going over there to try to help a yokai that you don't know e either like that, like, the regular person is not going to do that. There's no way the regular person is going to sacrifice half their life to save the mother of somebody they don't even know. But like I said before, Yusuke is that type of protagonist where he cares so much about others. He's willing to do that. And I definitely respected uh, Yusuke in that episode a lot because even I was shocked. I was like, really? Yusuke did, did that? Like, I, understand, I will understand if him and Kurama have been friends since childhood or something, but no, this is literally a yokai. Well, Kurama is, yeah, a person he just recently just met. Like a stranger still. Okay. Now, the battle of Yusuke versus the yokai Goki was a really good battle. I like the fight choreography and stuff and that, so very good episode. Uh, we got the introduction to Hiei. I already talked about Kuobara. And now, this is one of the antagonists. Sakio, casino owner. The man behind the curtains. The man pulling the strings. The Wizard of Oz in the series. Because this dude literally had Togoro, well, the Togoro brothers by his side. Was opening the hole that was connecting the demon realm. To the human realm right and i'm like this guy did all of this because he was bored however he did this for many years and years he literally said in one episode he dedicated years of his life to make this happen just because he was bored he was already rich he's a casino owner he has these top gamblers uh very corrupt people and stuff like that he has these these games well he well this tournament that he you know he set up and stuff which if you if we got a season two or three we'll, we'll get a way better tournament let me just say that than, than whatever this was but yeah they just gamble on on yokai and things like that and sakio had this acquaintance this, this investor guy that sold him the land where the hole that connected the demon realm to the human realm was right this guy was so scummy right because he had uh, he a sister crying, torturing her just so she could cry these crystallized tears 
and her tears were like worth a lot of money just so he could sell those gems basically oh man the the he basically symbolized the human greed because this guy was already a billionaire right because in one of the gambling things he was like i'm gonna bet 10 billion on one, one of them and then he he bet a lot more on Togoro as well so this guy lost 10 billion yen which is still a lot of money and he still wanted more he still wanted more and more and more and more and i'm very happy with his and in the anime i, I believe his name was taru 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 kane i believe that was his name i don't even care about this guy's name because this guy was just a, was just a scumbag let's see taru kane i believe that was his name yeah gonzo taru kane that 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 was him like this guy yeah so the other thing let's talk about Toguro. so we have the Toguro brothers the older brother is literally the little ones and the younger brother is the bigger one <laughs> which is hilarious so i guess by the way fun fact togashi the creator of hunter hunter is also the creator of yu haku show yu haku show was the his previous series before hunter hunter was everything so shout out to togashi and congrats for getting your anime and M well your manga to get actually a live action series so that's a really good thing right uh i was talking to somebody i was like everything does not need a live action series i forgot who i was talking to this but i'm happy that the care they're they're putting into these series right now so far so good one piece good you have to show good so far so you know hopefully they keep this like this because i'm hearing naruto's next if they butcher my favorite series of all time, Naruto, I think I'm like, I'm gonna be upset. I won't even do a rant. I don't even like doing rants on the channel because back in the day, I would make rants and I would go off. Like, if you're watching, if you're watching my channel, like I have some Dragon Ball Z rants about uh, Akira Toriyama hates Vegeta because Vegeta just got the short end of the sticks way too many times, and that's that's my favorite character in the series. But enough of that tangent, right? So, Toguro he became too strong for the world right so no one was left for him to fight so he wanted to go to the demon world and that is the only reason that he was working for sakio because he's like there's nobody left to challenge me toguro was so strong right when he became a yokai that one of the strongest well a strong yokai from the demon realm Bui. He literally lost to Togoro, and Bui, in his fight against Hiei, even says, I lost to Togoro, and then he loses to Hiei, he's like, okay, it's pointless to live, basically. So Togoro is that strong, right? And that's very impressive. So the whole Togoro backstory where he was a human once, he basically sold his soul, his younger, I mean, sorry, his older brother also sold his soul to become yokai, and basically... He did not want his strength to ever diminish because with age comes wisdom, right? Normally. But it also diminishes your physical strength. Look at Genkai and what he did to Genkai, which is really messed up. Because Genkai and Togoro, we find out, were actually friends. And Togoro still kill, kills Genkai, right? And even in the afterlife, what happens, Genkai still is like, Togoro, don't go to that part of hell. Like, that's it. You atone enough. That's it. Because... Uh, Togoro's backstory is sad. He basically was training. He was in the school or whatever, training. And a yokai came, killed everybody, ate them. And the only reason that yokai came was to challenge Togoro because, I guess, Togoro was so notorious. He, can you, look, being a human and hearing about, how, how, do you, how does a yokai hear about a human that is so strong, that must mean that Togoro, even as a human, had immense potential that this yokai said, you know what, I have to find Togoro and challenge him, right? But Togoro took the L, right? For first time, the yokai killed all his friends, Togoro was powerless, and then after that, Togoro wanted revenge, got his revenge, killed the yokai, but then Togoro was just left empty, right? Then later on sells his soul for not an immortal body, but a body that doesn't age 
but could still die because we did see Togoro die. We saw his older brother die as well. And he was just getting, he became so strong that he became bored. He was like, there's nobody for me to fight. So yeah, I got to find somebody stronger. And the only people that are stronger are those in the demon world, right? And that's why he worked for Sakio. But Togoro still had his honor because that's the reason he killed his older brother because he didn't want his older brother to interfere but later on he even said okay i'm going to discard my honor something he did not want to do by attempting to kill koabara just to awaken yusuke's hidden potential right to make yusuke angry to make yusuke actual power manifest because he knew yusuke had more power within him and Togoro said that Yusuke was like him. However, Yusuke, I like Yusuke's response. He was like, no, I'm not like you because I can't do things alone. That's why he has his friends. That's why Yusuke has his friends and all that. While Togoro, he chose this path of solidarity because all of his friends died. And that was the true reason he chose that path in the first place. It was not his choice. It was, well, it was his choice after he killed the yokai that killed his friends. But he just felt... I guess he needed to be alone and then he just gained so much strength and trained so much that he was like okay i i must do everything to find a worthy foe a worthy challenger and he finally found that worthy challenger in yusuke because sogori even admits okay this is the first time i ever like had to use basically sogori used 100 percent of his power this is another this is another little nitpick i did not like i wish that in the live action, Togoro actually said, I use 100% of my power. Because in the anime, Togoro actually says the percent. Uh, Togoro actually says the percent that he's actually going to use when his body. Let me see. Yeah, 100% power. So Togoro basically used 100% power. But in the anime, he doesn't actually state, okay, this is I mean, the live action, sorry. In the live action, he doesn't actually say, this is 45% or something like that. I think he mentioned it once, but yeah. And also, the the, the live action versus the anime, Togoro versus Yusuke. Yusuke in the, in the anime literally got... Wait, well, let me see. I, I don't want no copyright thing. I'm looking at the anime clip right now. Yusuke was getting decimated like very badly oh okay oh yeah and they, they 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 changed the thing around as well i knew there was like a tournament or stuff like an official looking tournament yeah yusuke got destroyed way worse in, in the anime than than the live action like live action he was so gravely damaged and stuff but the anime i thought this man was dead right so the fight was still good in the live action so i i gotta give them that also, I did like in the live action where Kuwabara, he and Kurama all interfered to try to help Yusuke. But they were just kicked around like they were fodder, even though... The thing is, they're not fodder. Kuwabara was really injured fighting against the older Togoro brother. He was injured uh, and drained, basically, after fighting Bui. And then Kurama was drained after fighting this other guy, uh, Karasu. All right, so let's see what else I have to talk. I have so much stuff to talk about because so much stuff happened. Well, this is what happens when I have a lot of notes. Um, so yeah, that's so in a nutshell. We had Kuobara and Yusuke training with Genkai. I really like that because Kuobara trained so hard and Genkai was like, he had spirit while Yusuke was complaining and crying. And Kobara hands were bleeding with the training, trying to slice a rock with a wooden sword. And this actually motivated Yusuke to actually train. And the, one of the reasons Kobara was training so hard as well is because he wanted Yusuke to see him as a rival, which is a good goal as well. And, you know, it, it wasn't really explained, oh, wait, how does Kobara have spirit energy or anything like that? But I guess he has an affinity for it. But it, it's fine. Th that didn't really need to explain. So that, that's not really a critique because Genkai has spirit energy as well. I'm assuming all living things, all humans, and, well, all living things have some form of spirit energy. It's just some people have, have more potential to be able to unlock its full, uh, yeah, its full potential. It's full some humans have more of an affinity to use the spirit energy than others that, that's what i'm assuming right so that's good also 
Not only to become Yusuke's rival, Kobara also says a man who can't protect what's important to him is no man at all. That was a really good line by Kobara, and I definitely do think that Kobara and and this live action was actually stealing a lot, a lot from Yusuke Spotlight. I, I do have to say that, which I was very surprised, and that's not really a bad thing. Kobara is, is a great character as well. We had Yusuke versus Hiei when Yusuke thought that Hiei was the one that kidnapped Keiko. That was a nice little, neat little battle, and then Ku, Kurama came and stopped it. We have Yusuke versus Genkai, where Yusuke got completely demolished by Genkai, which was funny to see. We have Sakio. Okay, so Sakio, he gambles to call his boredom. I already talked about Sakio and his boredom and stuff, like it, the reason why he did things. So I'm not really going to go too in depth with that. We have Kurama actually using his actual yokai form, which is y Yoko, y Yoko Kurama. I think that's how you pronounce it, Yoko Kurama. And Yoko Kurama basically, uh, like Karasu said, was just a cold-hearted, uh, cold-hearted yokai. So yeah, he had some, he had a, a big reputation in the demon world, Kurama. So that's really awesome. A uh, little backstory of that. We saw Kurama, even very weakened, back in human form, had a parasitic death plant. If you get that in your body, you're just dead no matter how strong you are. So I like how he won his battle against Karasu. We had Kuwabaru and Hiei, their first encounter. I thought it was really funny. Uh, it, it, was, it was just hilarious. hilarious. He's like, Hiei was like, who's this guy? And then Kuwabaru is like, oh, who's this short guy? So I like their dynamic. It, it's it's like the anime. So that's, that's what I really enjoy about that. And then later on in the boat where Hiei tells Kuwabaru, she's too good for you. Like, to, about... Uh, Yukina, his little sister, which I, I, right now, Kobara doesn't know that's his sister. Yukina as well doesn't know that uh, he is her brother as well. Which I wish he, even in the anime, I felt this way. Like, just, should have just been like, hey, I'm your big brother. That's it. Like, just say it. Like, it's not going to kill you. Like, nobody's going to go after your sister because, yeah, because you're he. Like, you could still protect her, is what I'm trying to say. We had Bui versus Hiei, where Hiei used the Dragon of the Darkness Flame. I, I always got a Dragon of the Darkness. Yeah, Dragon of the Darkness Flame. I gotta look it up because he doesn't. He didn't say the, the name of the attack, which I was still disappointed. But it was still really cool to see. Um, I don't remember if he. And also, I like that after using the technique, it has some recoil, so his uh, that arm was burnt and stuff. But it literally one shot at Bui, and Bui was still alive after taking the attack. And he was like, "Just kill me." And he is like, "No, I don't. I don't do things because people order me to." And then just left. Like that was really cool. Okay, so that was Sakyo's tournament in a nutshell. Also, Kuwabara did not win against Elder Togoro, but that that was fine because Elder Togoro just kept getting slice, 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 and kept regenerating. Like this dude had unlimited regeneration until. Younger Togoro was the one that actually finally killed him. So, yeah. Let's see what else I have for my notes. We, I really like the scene where Kuwabara sees Yukina for the first time. And he just keeps staring at her. And Keiko looks at Kuwabara like, oh, what's going on? And Kuwabara just basically fell in love there. So, I really like that. That they added that. That definitely happened in the anime and manga. So, I like that romance aspect is there with that. Let's see what else. I already talked about this. Yusuke, he and Kuwabara team up to take on Togoro. I, I like that as well. Oh, oh. So Togoro stopped Kuwabara's spirit sword with one hand. Togoro's a badass. Yusuke uses the spirit wave orb. Knocks Togoro back and Togoro's fine after taking that. Which is very impressive. Oh, the other thing is that Togoro says that Yusuke still has much more in him, which means that Yusuke still has even more potential that he has to unlock later on. So Yusuke is like the Gohan of Yu Yu Hakusho, if you know what I mean. Togoro, after he dies, chooses the worst hell of the ball because he wants to keep atoning, and that's why Genkai's like, that's it, you atone enough. And Togoro's like, no, I'm going to go to this hell. Now, I don't think we'll see Togoro again because... We have the human world, we have the demon world, we have the spirit world, and they're all disconnected from each other. And now we find out that there's different hells, 
Koenma is the one who's in charge that to place people in heaven or hell. But there's different versions of hell, so I'm assuming there's different versions of heaven as well. And Koenma has like the scroll of a person's life, and then he determines where they're gonna go. So Koenma, well, it was Sogoro's choice at the end of the day. So Sogoro kind of went to a hell. It will still be hell, but way worse than the one that he actually was gonna go to as well. So yeah, that is about it. Genkai is dead. To tell you the truth, that's interesting. Uh, but I'm not going to spoil anything about the anime, but I, let's just say that is interesting. I do hope we get a season two of Yu Yu Show. And if season two is five episodes, so be it. But to tell you the truth, I wish it was more episodes. I wish it was at least eight episodes. I'm not asking for ten because this costs money to produce and stuff like that. But it was a good series. I did enjoy it. It was, an, it was just good. It was just good. 7.5 out of 10. That's a great rating for it for me personally. Hope you enjoy this one and enjoy the rest of your Saturday night.